Okay guys, welcome back to Valley. We made it through another Pathfinder training area and had to fight off like three or four different... We still don't know what they are, I guess. They're kind of evil spirit guys, whatever. And uh, we got to uh, this giant statue thing over here. I don't know if that's supposed to be Astro or what it is, but uh... It's a big guy in chains, April apparently. 24th, 1943. What is the significance behind these colossal statues found throughout the valley? I find they all look so very... voracious. I keep returning to the idea of the mythical Sai Te Ka, the legendary tribe of cannibalistic giants that roamed North America and came into conflict with the aboriginals. But why would they be worshipped here? There must be something else to it. So, was she saying that the, uh, they didn't make these statues, they were already here? It's hard to follow along with the story, like, if you're playing normally. But when you're recording videos, it's probably even tougher. Because you play the game in, like, short, uh, short amount of time. You can't just sit down and play through the whole game. You could, but it'd probably be a pain to edit. Alright. Don't know how I would make that jump. Well, that didn't do the trick. So I somehow I did not kill myself. <laughs> well, if I could jump on his hand, maybe. And not jump in his hand, not kill myself. This is always fun, watching someone <laughs> struggle to get through one part. Have to go over it again. <laughs> Alright, we'll try and go this way. Yeah, it wasn't that complicated. <laughs> As the Astro facility increases output, the orbs can no longer keep pace. As such, energy will often be pulled from its surroundings. Only those equipped with leaf suits may venture near during increased production. We're on part 10. I'm not sure how many parts there are going to be. I'm hoping we're getting close to the end. Like I said, the series uh, hasn't been the greatest one. May 19th, 1943. The Sasaurians, much like other indigenous peoples, seem to hold strong cultural value in legendary creatures. The most notable one being the creature depicted on all these doorways. It resembles the mythological Wendigo, a fierce creature with an insatiable desire to consume flesh. The creature is most often linked with both greed and famine, acting as a balance of nature. Why would this creature hold such a strong cultural significance to them? Thought there would be something in this giant area, but there's really 
Nothing as far as I can see. Storm by shooting that tree up there. George of the jungle there. Just smack the tree. <laughs> I wasn't sure if there's another one around. Let's just go up this temple or whatever it is. The pyramid built by the Sasurians served as a ceremonial structure exalting the Colossi. Along with the Titan Tree and Daemons, they intertwined to form a mythology. From what I gathered, the Colossi were once humans who feasted upon the forbidden fruit, corrupting them into giant monstrosities, cannibalizing their fellow man and devouring all life within the valley. Is this a tale of caution? Are the Sasurians warning us against abusing the power of the life seed? Alright, that door needed 30 medallions, which we don't have. Wendigo mythology is utterly fascinating. Not only do they reflect famine and harsh winters, but also greed and gluttony. Sometimes even humans overcome with greed could turn into a Wendigo, doomed to feast upon the flesh of man for the rest of their lives. Never feeling... Yeah, whatever. Um, sometimes they are depicted as ever-growing as they consume more and more flesh. Uh, will I sleep tonight? Just a myth, Virginia. Just a myth. I think I know what that word is, but I just just don't know at the moment. The sheer amount of effort the Susserans put into constructing these architectural marvels is astonishing. It's a bit hard to understand sometimes. They had clearly grasped forms of advanced mathematics to be able to construct such structures. How long did it take them? How large a population was sustained here? It would have to be in the thousands. I don't know if I'm like stuck here because I don't have the medallions or what. Guess we could fight these guys. Smoke Lake.
course that one had to move. Ah, oh, that one just disappeared. Too bad they don't drop medallions. So yeah, I guess... We're gonna go back to that whatever pyramid thing at the end. Because you would think for the most part I open up pretty much every box. I'm probably completely wrong and like missed a ton. to the Astra facility. <clears throat> oh, well, it got stuck on something, got hit twice. <laughs> So we only need four more medallions and I don't know if that's the end of the game or what. And uh, gotta make these jumps, which is probably not gonna be easy. Stuff on that one. All right, just guess we'll just keep it moving. <laughs> One looked yellow, so I thought maybe I could interact with it or something. Another upgrade. Lake Skipper upgrade allows Pathfinders to run across water for a limited duration. Your speed will increase as you run. Alright, I heard about this one. Skipping a rock across water. Just like, where do we go? <laughs> Trying to gain some speed first before going across the second part. jump and now we know mm. 
least we're finally getting some more music in these last couple of parts. Ah. Uh, didn't know there was water on the other side. Just stay on track. <laughs> I'm just stay on track. I saw one of the uh, bad guys around here. Maybe we just keep going without having to deal with it. Okay, we finally made it to the Astro Facility. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and end the video here. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.